So my question to you then is, there's more art coverage in the blog sphere than in conventional publications, let's assume. Some of the writing is good, and some of the writing is average, and some is not so good. What is our responsibility to good writing and journalistic integrity, since we are all involved or have been involved in print journalism? How uh, do we approach our blog writing with conventional journalistic standards, or do we change it as befits a medium that is instantaneous and constantly changing? So that would be the first question to you all. I came to blogging probably the opposite way as everyone else on the panel that uh, I started getting print uh, commissions after I started writing blogs. So uh, the idea of journalistic standards is kind of new to me. Um, and <laughs> Sing it, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually cut my teeth on a political blog, and there was a truth to that that I think holds true for anybody whose blog has comments, which is you don't really need to adhere to standards. Your readers will make you adhere to standards. If you get something wrong, the response is so immediate and usually so brutal that you won't make it again. <laughs> because of that, the, a uh, blogger's code of ethics would sort of do any a better job at sort of monitoring things like that. However, I know that people are going to blogs more and more for their news as opposed to just their commentary. There's a famous instance of a blogger getting a journalist more or less fired because of conflict of interest and journalistic standards. And uh, I kind of weigh on the side of folks who think that as long as a writer's conflicts of interest are completely revealed, completely transparent, let them write, let them... What's very nice about blogs is there, there is kind of a transparency. Like, if I'm interested in a person, like a particular kind of work, like, I, like, I just cover it more, you know? And like, I don't... You know, if I have a personal relationship with that person, like, you know, I'll probably put, like, you know, so-and-so is my friend, but, like, I'm still going to cover it. And, like, I'll probably cover it more, and I don't care. Like, you know, it's my blog. I'm going to do what I want with it. Yeah. Well, having been a former reporter, I mean, <clears throat> we definitely think about, like, a lot of legal issues that, uh, that you know, definitely apply to blogs. Yeah, we might be bloggers, and we might be a little faster and looser with the writing. Um, than a mainstream media outlet or a weekly magazine might be, but you know the, the law still applies to us in a number of arenas. I mean, the first is libel, um, certainly. The second is disclosure of private facts about somebody. So, like if I'm running around at a fair and I take a picture of somebody and reveal something about them and they're uh, they're not a public figure, um, I could still be in a lot of trouble for that even though I'm not a mainstream publication. Um, there's a couple of other things like taping interviews and uh, describing legal cases. Uh, the language used to describe anything that's in the legal process always has to be like couched really carefully. And these are things that I always take, you know, that I, I try to apply as, as fast and loose as my blog might be and anybody who's read it knows that it's rife with stupid YouTube videos and poop jokes, um, but <laughs> which I love. Um, but I do, I do take certain basic reporting standards very seriously um, because they can get you in a lot of legal hot water. And if, if anybody here is a blogger and you are reporting on stuff regularly and, and you don't know about it, the Electronic F Frontier Foundation uh, has a great website and they have a whole section on their website called Bloggers Rights and it explains the law to you and what kind of stuff you're liable for and what you're not. And My blog, like Ed, came, came first and then writing for other things came second. It's sort of reading, my, my blog is a digest of articles and reading all these articles every day made me more interested in writing and sharing these articles and everything else. So I don't have a great background in journalistic standards. Although one time I did get the gender of someone wrong. But they let me know, so that was good. <coughs> it was a foreign name, I didn't know. <laughs> Actually, it's very safe. It's like having, you know, 10 editors instead of one. But you also assume that there's no conflict of interest in the art world in general. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And so <coughs> writing for art magazines is a very, you know, there, it used to be that you didn't write about stuff you owned. That was given, just like curators weren't in the old days supposed to collect stuff they owned because it was a conflict of interest. I don't think that those standards exist anymore. And so people can write about what they buy. I remember a long time ago, Phyllis Kine complained to me because Roberta Smith bought a piece out of one of her shows. And she said, damn, I would rather have her write about it than buy it. <laughs> and now she won't write about it because Roberta has standards. But now it's all so blurred that I don't think we can, we can say there is a code of ethics in that. The thing about a blog is that you can continue to edit it. So yes. this is a wonderful thing because you can get a new idea, you can put it up there, you can continue to flesh it out, and that's something you can't do when you are in print. I guess I get to say something. Um, I put a disclaimer on my blog called uh, Guaranteed uh, Biased, Myopic, Incomplete, and Journalistically Suspect. And, you know, I did it as a joke, but the fact is, um, I sort of guessed at the number of fairs. I mean, I, I did a quick count uh, on the list. Could have been off by a few. Uh, others, I might just say, wow, there were a lot of fairs, at the, a lot of galleries at this fair. Because, you know, I have to say, this is not my career anymore. This is, this is what I do is for fun. Um, so I try to be accurate, but I'm aware that I'm not always 100% accurate, and I, and I want everyone to know that, while at the same time being responsible to the people that I write about. Owning a gallery and being concerned about the artist's copyright, I am very sensitive to the idea that you don't want to just take something and not credit it. The way that I kind of do it when I'm being lazy is I simply link the image into mine from its original source, and that alerts the person who can follow any links back to my blog that I've used that image. You know, if you're a professional blogger, you can, and you're not like a link blog, you know, you really only spend so much time sending someone somewhere else before they just go somewhere to that other place. So you know, my blog is a jerk, uh, digest of criticism, and. I wish there was more criticism in the blogs. You know, I wish there was more in-depth criticism where somebody really talked about the context and the, you know, the work itself. And you know, I I try to write stuff once a month, but like Patty says, you know, there's not all that much time to do it. So, you know, my solution has been to do, sort of do this compilation of critical um, essays. And I wish that the monthly magazines were online. It drives me wild that you can't read it. But then again, when you read it, it's not the criticism isn't that great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, often not critical. It's often expository yeah. without having to see it as a literary effort. I am someone who was once a slam poet and also a critic. And so I see my blogging as somewhere between slam poetry and criticism. And I really want it to be written, and I want it to be well written. And I will say, uh, I have to give credit to, I, I don't see art in America as a sausage factory. It may well be. Um, but I've had articles that, I actually had one article, the cover story on Christian Markley, where they only made one change. But I find that the editorial process has made me really sharp. And so I can bring that. I don't want the responsibility of being a critic. If there is an artist out there who is, has sufficiently been out there, has a reputation, and understands the nature of, you know, you put your work out there and people will have opinions about it, I don't have a problem um, offering an opinion that might have some negative um, aspects to it. You know, it really is all about context and, and trying to be fair and, and not glossing it over, just trying to be fair and doing it at the right time. Does that make sense? I totally second what Joanne said. It's You can take pot shots at people who have put themselves out there. You cannot at people who are just beginning and who may not realize what the context is and what's happening. It was the bloggers convention here at Red Dot. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Kate.